Hi everyone, the dinosaurs. Just about everyone knows that dinosaurs roamed the Earth circa 200 million years ago. At their peak, current estimates suggest that there were about 1,000 dinosaur species on the surface of the Earth, and more if you include the flying bird-like dinosaurs. Earth was essentially a world of reptiles back in the day. They evolved here. Then, about 66 million years ago, nearly all of the dinosaurs were wiped out by what appears to be an event involving the impact of a large meteor or asteroid. Now, that is what we assumed going into this project, a project where we wanted to look at the cause of the extinction of the dinosaurs. Well, we got a lot more than just that. Like loud sounds of rumbling from different structures being destroyed by something. I'm sensing the rumbling is similar to like an earthquake, but it's, it's like forced by something else, not an earthquake. I'm noticing a vibration. There's a loud sound from this vibration that's continuously similar to a rumble in foliage big and scaly and rough skin textured, um, kind of golden color skin. And they're huge and heavy. That's what that is. So it's a really tiny little thing and it kind of just darts between the trees that I see. It's kind of just like flying between branches and stuff like that. This is just like a lumbering behemoth of a reptile that's just sort of like cruising on the on the relatively flat base surface that's pretty brown in hues and texture as well. This environment is like a distant memory and I don't understand why I feel this way, but I feel safe here. I feel free here. It's It's like I'm, I've been welcomed here before, but not like this, not, not in remote viewing, whether it be a dream or an astral projection or another life. Now, we believe that we understand what happened long ago. Moreover, what happened is beginning to paint a very clear picture of our own world today and why we are in the mess we are in. The history of our planet is much more complicated than contemporary mainstream science understands. This type of thing is sort of just sitting down in the environment and it looks very high tech. It looks very out of place as opposed to the rest of the more minimalist uh, crafted materials that are around. And I get a lot of sense of patterns, like almost tribally patterns, like on the breastplate and other type of stuff like that as well with this subject. But what mainstream scientists don't understand is that the impact event was not the result of a random asteroid that crashed into the Earth, creating the equivalent of a worldwide firestorm and subsequent nuclear winter all just a consequence of bad luck. Rather, that asteroid that did crash into the Earth was part of a coordinated attack on this planet, an attack that was purposefully designed to eradicate most reptilian life. Uh, he's being lifted off the ground and this massive force is just this wind dynamics from this heat and energetics from this like massive explosion is just wishing right past this uh, reptilian humanoid looking type of being. It's like he's, he was on the base surface, he looked up and there's this wall of just wind and dust and he just like gets lifted right off the ground and is screaming and then it just sort of like dissolves the guy. I want to see where this explosion came from. It's on the surface, it's just wind boom, swirling, hard wind. Uh, it makes rocks in sand hit my face. It sliced my face. Um, I see this non-surface structure above a central surface structure. 
and it's rectangular with peaks or spikes coming out. Um, So now I'm going to look inside this non-surface structure. I'm seeing several subjects inside this structure. Subjects are seated in this structure. Subjects look like humans. It just feels like things like hitting the base surface and things crumble. But like right here inside these energetics, it feels like there's very hard um, man-made structures, so there's non-surface structures hidden inside of these energetic clouds. Um, it feels like there's subjects inside of these structures, um, inside of these non-surface structures. On the base surface, I sense that there's subjects here, but these subjects feel like they're kind of, um, like they 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 used to be there, or they're kind of half there, half not, they're fading in and out of like consciousness or existence. Um, so it feels like there's like a lot of subjects here, but it also feels like a lot of them aren't like here. A war between two opposing species. What we have determined through many of our projects here at Farsight is that a favorite weapon used by extraterrestrials is a natural object that is thrown into a collision with a target which, in this case, was a planet occupied by the reptilians. Moreover, our data suggests that the natural objects were only part of the attack. There apparently were weapons fire from non-surface structures as well, and we can only assume that the weapons fire were directed at the intelligent reptilians, both to make sure they could not counterattack and to ensure that they died. Remember what the famed physicist Stephen Hawking once said, As I grow older, I am more convinced than ever that we are not alone. But also remember that he said, if so, they will be vastly more powerful and may not see us as any more valuable than we see bacteria. If other beings were so bold as to try to eradicate the reptilians on two entire worlds in this solar system, both Earth and Maldek, there must have been strongly felt motivating reasons. But regardless of these reasons, it is also evident that the wars have not ended the conflicts. As the human mainstream continues to downplay the reality of UFOs and extraterrestrials, they put everyone at risk. Okay.